Hello everyone, I am Rahul Ghosain and I'm a general medical oncologist practicing at University of Rochester in Rochester, New York. Hello everyone, I'm Rohit Ghosain at UPMC Chautauqua Hospital, UPMC Hillman Cancer Center, and I'm a community oncologist here reporting live from ASCO 2023 and we are Oncology Brothers. We just wrapped up with plenary session four practice changing studies for us as a general medical oncologist. Let's dive into one of these studies, practice changing, practice reinforcing the DORA trial. For this, we have Dr. Balaj Hamos. Do you mind introducing yourself and let's sure dive thing, into sure that. Thing. What an honor to be here with you guys today. I'm Balaj Hamos. I'm a medical oncologist focusing on thoracic oncology. I'm Associate Director of Clinical Science at the Montefiore Einstein Cancer Center in the Bronx, New York. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Almos. Now, we know that uh, osimertinib has been utilized in metastatic settings for lung adenocarcinoma significantly. Now, when we talk about the adjuvant setting, we have been utilizing it, but we had PFS data. Today, we saw overall survival data. If you don't mind going over that, please. Of course, of course. What a transformational day in a way, transformational to the point that, you know, maybe 15 years ago, we recognized that lung cancer is not one disease comes in molecular subsets. Identifying those subsets help us you know, treat our metastatic cancer patients better. They have nice remissions, you know, they seem to you know, live longer, but curing them has not been a possibility. At the same time, that success made us move these you know, treatments into earlier stage setting. The ADORA study, randomized phase three pivotal study, is really the first one that now teaches us what can we achieve in that early stage setting. And three years ago, plenary session here, we've, we've seen you know, really just the impressive, you know, DFS benefits, hazard ratios of 0.2, really, really, you know, just, just, just tremendous. But there was this kind of uh, feeling in the air that maybe there's some concern that this is a transitional benefit. You know, these targeted treatments are cytostatic, they are not cytotoxic, and with, with time the cancer might return. And in fact, there was an update of the Adora study a year ago, which maybe highlighted this concern that as, the, that as asimertinib was stubbed in the study at three years, there seemed to be maybe, uh, you know, some recurrences to, to suggest that there's a limitation in terms of the benefits. So everybody was just so eager to see what is the OS data. And the OS data is just, is just super impressive. It's, it's eye-popping on a certain level with a hazard ratio of 0.49. And let me just translate that, you know, that, that means that out of 10 patients that we diagnose, you know, today with early stage lung cancer that qualifies, you know, for this treatment, we cure an additional, you know, one patient out of 10, uh, you know, with, with two patients, you know, recurring on average. So that's an incredibly impressive number and 10% absolute benefit at five years. And this is from stage 1B to stage 3A. And of course, the benefit, you know, will increase as we go to the high risk patients, patients with stage 3 disease, where I think this, these results really uh, highlight the mandate, mandate to offer regiment asimertinib. And I think these results also make me say that even the earlier stage cases, stage 1B, where, you know, maybe there was some, some, some feeling that, you know, it might not be so necessary. If you look at the data, we're looking at five-year overall survival of 94 versus 88 percent. Number one, that's cutting again, you know, death rate in half. I mean, that's amazing. Secondly, just think about it. 94% overall survival at five years. This is lung cancer. Yeah, right. We're not talking about Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's not, that's not testicular <laughs> cancer, okay? Right. So really just amazing. So I think we, we need to expand the pool of patients that will treat with adjuvant asimertinib. I think based on these results, I'll definitely offer it to all of our patients who will qualify, including the stage one is more than I did you know, before today. And I think we'll have to start thinking about is the duration of treatment appropriate? Maybe we'll need to extend it beyond three years. We need, we need to have studies to guide us in that, but also expanding the horizons. Is it just EGFR? Or do we need to start thinking about ALK and RAS and others? So precision medicine is here to stay in early stage lung cancer. We've seen beautiful data with new adjuvant chemo IO, now with you know, adjuvant targeted therapy. So it's a must, it's a must to make sure that biomarker testing is done for everyone, everyone appropriately, including immune and molecular you know, biomarker testing. So just make sure that you do that as of tomorrow. Thank you for going over that, because I think where we are is, yes, there's great data, but starting off with that precision medicine. We can talk about this day in, day out, but if you're not testing for NGS, you do not know who needs osimertinib or who does not. 
There's so many questions about this. First, right now we are seeing significant shortage of platinum drugs. In community, if a patient's sitting in front of me saying, I don't want chemotherapy, or I don't have that, unfortunately, the drug, are you comfortable moving forward with this osomertinib? Well, number one, the study allowed patients with or without you know, chemotherapy. Uh, and some people have criticized that design, but I think today that helps us, help us understand that this actually teaches us about the entire spectrum of patients, patients who do not qualify for chemotherapy, patients who might just not simply need benefit from chemotherapy. So I think it's actually nice that it's a fair split, 40 to 60 percent uh, in terms of having or having not received adjuvant chemotherapy. So I think that's, that's nice to have in, in our back pocket. So if a patient doesn't want to receive chemotherapy, but they have an EGFR mutated tumor that you think will benefit from adjuvant osimertinib, they should qualify for it. Now, is there a patient population where we could omit adjuvant chemotherapy as a result, a result of this study? This study was not designed to answer that. So I think what we need to remember is that for appropriate patients, we should consider offering adjuvant chemotherapy. Who is the appropriate patient? Maybe we'll recalibrate though a little bit, okay? Because the outcomes of these patients are so good at five years, that maybe that, that fractional benefit that we anticipate from adjuvant chemotherapy put against you know, the risk of adjuvant chemotherapy for some patients might no longer you know, make it worthwhile. So I think it's just something to include in our conversation. Maybe that recalibration has to take place, but the bottom line, this study has not answered any questions about adjuvant chemotherapy, but it resoundingly answered the question about adjuvant targeted therapy. Biomarker testing is critical. EGFR mutated patients who fall into the category who qualified for the Adora study should be offered adjuvant osimertinib for the duration of at least three years of therapy. Right. Absolutely. And I can't stress the importance of these results, especially when we are talking about early stage lung cancer patients who were not getting cured while the other disease sites were getting hit. With this now, we have such a profounding data on overall survival. Now we know that we do stop at three years, and as you mentioned, that we do need more studies on that. If you have a patient who is doing well after three years of this therapy, now these patients are very hesitant to come off of the drug, especially when you don't see any uh, progression or any concerns. Would you continue on with this therapy in the current setting? <laughs> uh, the, the, the study looked at the question of three years of adjuvant osimertinib, so we have no data to guide us about the duration. But it's intriguing. It's intriguing to look at the data to, to feel that maybe some patients will benefit from longer treatment. So I think an appropriate nuanced discussion at three years is, is fair. How did the patient you know, tolerate the treatment until that time? You know, uh, you know, what was the you know, financial you know, aspect in terms of you know, receiving that treatment? What was their baseline risk? You know, has there been any you know, concern in terms of recurrence? So nuanced discussion, but at the moment I think Three years is the duration that we know of, and we should continue to study. But there's hope that maybe Absolutely. a longer duration, longer term, will benefit uh, some of our patients even more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then again, focusing on the patient population here, of course, that was not the focus today. We saw overall survival benefit here. These are the patients that have higher CNS mats. In your practice, do you consider MRI surveillance for these asymptomatic adjuvant patients? Do you consider routine brain MRI? What's your practice? Well, that's, that's a very difficult question. Number one, at baseline, they should definitely get you know, a, a, a staging you know, brain staging. MRI. So that should be a must you know, in terms of completing staging. Uh, CNS recurrence is a major risk for these patients, but I got to say that the, the risk really starts happening at a significant degree as they come off of adjuvant osimertinib. So thinking that you know getting six monthly MRIs for the first two years will be all that great yield, I, 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 I find it doubtful. I, I've heard some colleagues mention that as they stop adjuvant osimertinib, maybe it's not a terrible idea you know with the first scan afterwards to include a brain MRI because that that might be the time of you know when you could capture most of these events. But I gotta say here we have to continue to think how to uh, do, do optimal practice. We're, we're, we're not sure yet, uh, but I would say baseline is an absolute must. Afterwards, you know, patient by patient level considerations. Mm -hmm. That's very important. This is exciting because in the past, we've only seen overall survival benefit with chemotherapy decades ago. And here we are, another study showing overall survival benefit in someone that you can look for using NGS and you have a target and we can use something like osomertinib for these patients. This is very exciting times. Yeah, it's a super exciting time and if you think about it, adjuvant chemotherapy is beneficial but it's beneficial this much. Right. I think the overall survival benefits that we see now with 
the neoadjuvant chemoimmunotherapy yes. approaches, the adjuvant targeted approaches are much more impressive. Uh, so we're in a new era, and that's an era that, that the last 20 years of research you know, has, has allowed us to now enjoy going forward. But our patients will not enjoy it unless we put it in practice. So this, this, this is so important for us, you know, for all, all of our patients to be considered in a multidisciplinary setting for the new adjuvant approaches, adjuvant approaches based on proper biomarker testing and careful staging. And I think just to, before we close, it is extremely important for patients to know, oncologists and medical community to know that we can talk about the survival data all day long, but until unless we are testing for these tumor markers, targeted mutations, we are not going to get ahead. So it is extremely important to check for this and so we can continue to take the field forward and cure our patients. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank, thank you guys for inviting thanks. me. Thank you. Thank you.